Uh, this show is about best friends for health. You two are absolutely beautiful together, if I may say that. Thank yeah. you. And, and, and I also, I just can't believe that this happened in June. Yeah. And here you are. I know. It's a miracle. And I'm sure, Nick, you were probably told that she may not recognize you. She may not know you, your family. She yeah. may not know the love that you shared together all those years. One of the biggest fears in all of this was that, exactly. Would she remember me? Would she remember, just like you said, all that we had been through these 13 years, our children? Whether she remembers me or not, I just need her to stay here with me, with our family, because, you know, her presence is the important part. And it's not her hair, it's not her beauty on the outside, it's just her. And that's what I needed. And Jamie, let's go back to that day. Was that actual footage from that day? That was. Do you remember anything? You know, I remember pulling back on the pole and then my next memory is waking up in the hospital, surrounded by everyone that I love. They told me what happened and eventually handed me a mirror. And I looked in the mirror and saw the shaved head and big bandaging on my head and a swollen, bruised face. Now, were you able to speak right away? Were you, did you have to take you know, speech therapy and lessons? They had me involved in speech and occupational and physical therapy, but I never had a problem speaking. In fact, they asked me to read and asked me to write. Nick handed me a piece of paper and a pen and I actually brought the note, my first writings, <laughs> when, when <laughs> after the accident. Writing. And I wrote, Jamie Hilton loves Nicholas Hilton. <laughs> oh, God. And, and I think a lot of people are probably having trouble understanding what exactly happened to your brain. I just want to medically take this moment to describe Jamie's brain injury, because you have to understand that your skull is a fixed object. And think of your brain as almost a pinball within that skull, when Jamie's head hit the ground, her brain pinballed against the skull. It caused frontal contusions. It caused what's known as a subdural hematoma, which is a collection of blood surrounding the brain. And what happens when you develop a hematoma in the brain, it causes, in some cases, what's called a midline shift. Because that blood builds up, but think about it. The brain has nowhere to go. This skull can not only save your life, but it can kill you. Because as your brain shifts more and more, all that pressure pushes onto one side of the, of the skull and it has nowhere else to go. And you can actually die, and you likely would have died if your physician didn't do one thing, which is remove 25% of your skull. By removing Jamie's skull, what it does is it allows this brain room to shift over and it allows you a chance to recover. What's also fascinating about your story is that this skull, you can't just take your skull off and just lay it on the table. Yeah. It'll die. Bone right. is living tissue. Right. So they actually put this in your abdomen. Mm -hmm. But the reason that the skull is placed inside the abdomen is it needs a sterile place to, quite frankly, hang out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until your brain swelling has gone oh, down yeah to a point where it can, can be reattached. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely had never heard of this before. <laughs> it's the first time I'd heard of anyone ever doing this. I was just thankful to be alive.